to speak to the group again. I've spoke to you before. My name is Stan Lambert. I'm with the Wabash River Enhancement Corporation up in Lafayette, West Lafayette, Tippecanoe County. And our organization, the Wabash River Enhancement Corporation, was just to give you a little bit of context. Um, there's a few people here I don't recognize. Um, the Wabash River Enhancement Corporation is a 501c3 agency. It was created in 2004. I was brought in as the first executive director in 2005. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life in the Wabash River Corridor by providing sustainable opportunities to improve health, recreation, education, economic development, and environmental management. Uh, we have a long range mission of working in, originally in a four county region consisting of Fountain Warren, Tippecanoe, and Carroll counties. Uh, we initially started focusing on Tippecanoe County. It had the most project ready resources in place and in hand. Uh, we have, if again, if you go back to our mission though, where it talks about sustainable enhancement, uh, we, we knew very early on that we needed to work on improving water quality because it didn't matter how cool we make the banks of the river look, if the river and its ecosystem itself is unsafe to be around, unhealthy, uh, environmentally unclean, aesthetic, aesthetically not pleasing to look at, people may come once, but they won't come back that third, fifth time, they won't live, come live, work and play along the Wabash River corridor. So we started working on improving water quality uh, from the get-go. And as you know, a river is a dynamic water resource, and so if you want to improve water quality in the Wabash River, you've got to work on its watershed. So from the get-go, we've been working in about an eight to 10 county region up there around Tippecanoe County on the sub watersheds of the river. Uh, but as far as the corridor, we focus mainly on Tippecanoe County. Uh, we have a, a corridor master plan for the first, for the 30 miles of the river corridor flowing through Tippecanoe County done. We pulled out the Lafayette, West Lafayette urban riverfront section of that and did a still conceptual master plan, but a little bit higher level of detail. Uh, but then, and we've been working on that project, getting that planning done. And then the state came up or, or the Lilly Foundation approached our community foundation back in 2015 with a proposal to uh, look at regional economic development in and around the Tippecanoe County area. And so a study was commissioned to determine was there a viable economic region oriented around Tippecanoe County? And if so, what were the strengths, what were the weaknesses and challenges and needs for that region? And so through that study, it was determined that yes, there was an economic development region that was oriented around Tippecanoe County. And they formed a board, called themselves the Wabash Heartland Innovation Network. And it consists of 10 counties and there's Benton County, Warren County, Fountain County, Montgomery County, Tippecanoe County, White County, Pulaski County, Carroll County, Cass County, and Clinton County are the 10 counties that make up that region. And so coming out of that region, they did a survey and identified in that survey was a need for improving connectivity within the, those 10 counties, improving quality of life was seen as a, a, a real economic development and quality of life project goal for the region. And so they came to our agency and asked if we would lead the effort to develop a Wabash River Greenway through the five counties of the 10 county region that have the river flowing through it. And that's Fountain, Warren, Tippecanoe, Carroll, and Cass counties. So where originally we had a four county long range mission, regional mission, uh, Cass County has been added into that region now so that we are working in five counties for the corridor. Uh, we have started to work on getting uh, step one to get a corridor master plan put together. And, and in doing that, we have a regional uh, steering committee, some of which we have some of those representatives here, Dale White, who is the executive director of the Western Indiana Community Foundation. Uh, we have Tim Shoemaker, who is also on the Wabash River Heritage Corridor Commission. Aaron Shaver, who is on the commission from Cass County, is representing Cass County on our Greenway project. Uh, Steve Everly from Warren County is also on our steering committee and he's also the Warren County representative here. And is there anyone else? That on there. Um, so at, we started this project in June of 2020 and we have been moving forward. We hope to be done this winter with creating a corridor master plan. We want to focus on just what we've been doing in the planning process now, but after we're done, I'd like to spend a few minutes and talk about the idea uh, 
that Riverscape brought up uh, of a state linear park because we have started some conversations at the state level uh, on that very idea and uh, we'd like to really have further discussions with you on, on that idea. We think it's a, a very neat idea and one that we need to all be working collectively together to pursue that. Stan, uh, what is a linear park? A linear park, a greenway. A linear park is a park that's not just in one place, but is stretched out over a corridor. It could be a rail corridor, like the Cardinal Greenway Rail Trail, could be a Wabash River Greenway, a greenway park that stretches out regionally. And, and connects places, connects uh, people, for communities together. Uh, the, the Blue Ridge Parkway. Blue Ridge Parkway. Is, is a national park. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And they have really been really successful. We've been collecting articles and information on those from success, success stories from around the country here recently and uh, they are a really innovative idea that re really creates destination regions within states and areas. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Ken Remenschneider and Brandon Schreck from Kimley Horn. They are the planning firm uh, that we have engaged to help us in lead leading the planning effort to get the corridor master plan put together. Kimley Horn is a nationally known firm, but they have a solid base of operations in Indianapolis, and that's the office that Ken and Brandon look out of. Thank you, Stan. Uh, up here on stage, it's certainly a, a privilege to be before this commission and to talk to you about the project that we're doing with Wabash River Enhancement Corporation. Uh, you know, I grew up on a river in Indiana, it's the Mommy River, uh, and, and as we have gotten into studying this corridor and the history and the culture behind it, and the fact that it drains two thirds of the state of Indiana. Uh, we have come to the conclusion that the story of the Wabash River really hasn't been told well to the people of Indiana. And we also believe it has the potential. And Charlie, the River State Group, thank you for, for bringing up the Linear Park. I mean, we think it has the potential to be much more significant recreational resource for uh, the people of Indiana. And also, uh, if you look at the good work that Stan's group has done in terms of improving water quality in the Wabash River, those metrics have really changed from pollution and sediment. And, and so the work that they had been doing, mostly focused around Tippecanoe County, is now being expanded. And we're very excited about the potential to continue to improve the Wabash River and its water quality. And one of the things that, that I have learned in speaking with people, and actually at our public meetings, we've been using raffles from the Indiana Canoe and Kayak uh, <coughs> Organization on Wildcat Creek. If you get people on the river to experience the river from the water, they have a totally different perspective. And, and so this project uh, is going to hopefully get more of our Indiana residents on the water. Uh, Stan has mentioned uh, the Water Sugar Enhancement Corporation leading the project, and uh, Brandon and I are with Tim Horn. Uh, he's also mentioned the uh, people that are on our steering committee that are associated with this commission. Uh, and, and you can see some of the other people. So we have elected officials and, and people involved in trail development and community foundations, uh, all with an interest in seeing these kinds of quality of life amenities coming to their community. Why don't you take just a minute to talk about your mission? Protect and enhance the natural, cultural, historical, and recreational resources and encourage sustainable development of this core. Uh, the fact that it drains two-thirds of the state of Indiana is it, it really serves a vital function for the, the bulk of our entire state. And, uh, you know, turning it into a recreational resource and doing sustainable development, uh, we believe has a lot of potential to really, really change people's perceptions of this river. Uh, and, and some of the work that Sam's done in terms of uh, purchasing brownfields and then mitigating those brownfields so that when you have flood waters, you're not having toxins that are then moving into the water, the corridor. So uh, we see a lot of uh, opportunity here for uh, turning this into a real uh, natural resource for the state of Indiana. And a linear park idea would be a great way to uh, uh, 
quantum leap in terms of getting that to happen. Uh, so uh, we, want, we certainly want to touch on that. And then also in terms of your vision to help local communities uh, you know, benefit from the uh, Wabash River Corridor and, and to celebrate the history and culture. You know, Wabash River was, was the original highway in Indiana. All the Indians, all of our Native American uh, cultures used the river as the transportation highway. And so we have all kinds of cultural sites along there. Uh, Prophet Sound Park celebrates that. Uh, we have opportunities to better tell that story. And as people use the Wabash River Greenway to actually experience Indiana's history and culture, very unique history and culture, and then tell some of those stories. So uh, we see a lot of alignment between what you're doing and what we're doing. Uh, we are to provide a five county regional trail facility that improves access to the Wabash River, enhances quality of life throughout the corridor, and develops a regional trail tourism economy. And uh, we'll get into some of the ways in which we're um, uh, accomplishing that here in just a minute. And then to also provide a world-class regional destination trail experience that provides exceptional experiences at the Wabash River. So a project overview. Uh, these are images of the types of facilities that people can experience along a destination trail of the type that we are planning. Uh, you can see, you know, in, in the sister from here. I guess my corner is not looking. The upper left photograph, it's a, it's a bike share. Bike share facilities are important on corridors like this to give people a chance to experience the corridor when they discover it, when they didn't know it was there, and they discover it, and they decide to get on a bike. Those types of bike share facilities oftentimes will encourage people to come back and actually turn it into more of a, so a big, uh, weekend or a vacation experience. And so these types of facilities do attract people who vacation on the trail and on the route. And if you can imagine people vacationing on that trail, they're spending more money too. They're looking not only for a place to overnight, but also a place to have meals and, and also looking for entertainment venues. And people who use these types of facilities are looking for those experiential type of uh, activities, and they like to do it with their friends, and so they bring people with them on these uh, destination trails. Scope, uh, we've been through resource inventory analysis, uh, including looking at history and culture up and down the river, which is really fascinating. Uh, needs and benefits uh, of the corridor and the communities and how this trail can help meet some of those needs and benefits. We've had public involvement, we'll talk about in a minute. We're in the midst of uh, wrapping up our design and routing and cost estimates associated with that. And we have a promotional campaign on the website uh, and we are developing pilot projects in each of the five counties. Um, so if you can imagine, you can't build the whole thing at once. So we're identifying projects that are easy to execute in each of the five counties so that we can get something on the ground so that people can have a better idea in each county what we're talking about. And we often find in the planning and design world that there is a certain segment of the population that just doesn't quite understand it until you build something. And then they say, well, that's what you guys have been talking about. I now understand. So uh, we're going to have pilot projects in each county. Here's our website, wabashrivergreenway.com, uh, and you can access uh, all kinds of information there on our mapping, history and cultural information, partnerships that we have in developing the Greenway. So we actually, we executed our contract to do this work pre-COVID, and we of course had a scope of work that laid out how we we're gonna do public engagement. Well, that changed, right? Uh, with everything that we've been going through. So, so we did public engagement up and down the corridor, uh, setting up pop-up boards at libraries. And we had various ways in which people could provide us with uh, input. We had little sticky tags where you could write a note, slap it on the board. We had uh, forms you could fill out to stick into a box. Um, and then we also have had surveys we've been putting out. Just out of curiosity, is there anybody in the, in the group that has seen the website or been to it? Okay, that'll change tonight, right? All right. Uh, 
And then over here on the right, we have photographs of public workshops that we have been doing uh, actually rather quite recently, uh, including this week, and so up in Cass County. So we, we continue to gain public input on what people are interested in seeing. So what are some of the trail benefits? I, I think in this crowd, I probably have a more educated crowd in terms of this topic than, than most crowds. But, uh, you know, visitors and Indiana Trail users that are regular users will spend $3,500 a year along the corridor. And so it's important for businesses that are near the corridor or next to the corridor to find ways in which to capture some of that revenue that they can capture or what people you know, the experiences they're looking for, shopping and dining, entertaining. Um, and then trail construction demonstrates a positive return on investment. <coughs> trail construction, <coughs> excuse me, compared to highway construction, trail construction um, provides uh, for every million dollars spent seven more jobs because roadway construction is more mechanized. And so the money spent on trails um, actually goes back into your local community and rolls around in your local community. So um, there's that kind of benefit. And then quality of life amenities, they increase property values. The closer your property is to trails and greenways, the more valuable your property is because of that access. That is uh, you've seen all across the country. And then trail access improves community health, wellness, and workforce readiness. Uh, people that uh, get into the habit of using trails and greenways of this sort do develop healthy habits, and they oftentimes like to do that with friends. So they get other people involved as well, and that improves the health of our workforce. So I'm going to turn it over to Brandon and talk about facility types. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Brandon Schreck with Kimberly Horn. Um, thank you for this beautiful venue in which to hold this meeting. Uh, we're thrilled to be here and want to talk more about the details of the project here. So I'm going to run through kind of quickly the types of facilities that we're talking about putting on the ground and planning for. Um, our greenway is, is somewhat sort of all-encompassing in our view as far as pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Um, it's not just a trail. Trail as shown here is a part of it. So we're gonna go through kind of what that means here. So some of this is from a, a recent public workshop too. So, you know, the mapping line up, the, up at the top there might not make sense exactly. But the um, trails as we know them, you know, eight to 10 foot, 12 foot wide, something like that, uh, could be various materials. Whether that be you know, natural surface, boardwalks, um, asphalt, concrete, so those are definitely those definitely have a place within the project. Side paths, uh, we're using existing transportation corridors, uh, road corridors to make sure we can also weave traffic, uh, bike pedestrian traffic through those areas as well. I mean, you're seeing here, you're fully separated from the street. You do have those kind of crossings and everything at uh, intersections and driveways to kind of worry about as well. Um, we also have two different kind of on-street facilities that we're looking into. One of those is more of an urban shared use where you're actually in the lane uh, with cars on bike traffic. Um, we have this within the municipalities, the cities and towns within the, the corridor. And then we have the rural sign bike route. So that is obviously more in the rural areas where we're utilizing towpath roads, river roads, you know, those, those sort of corridors, um, lower, lower travel, um, lower frequency of, of car traffic, vehicular traffic through there, and then signing that as well. And we have a signage program that we're working on too. We can go through here in a second. Also bridge crossings, we're studying bridge, bridges and bridge crossings up and down the corridor and within five counties. Um, you know, that could, that could be a simple sort of raised sidewalk as you see on the picture on the left or um, a picture on the lower right is a full separation that can happen with a crash barrier. So your you know, pedestrian vice bus is fully separated from the vehicular traffic. Or in the upper right, um, you know, that could be leave the vehicular bridge as it is and then put a pedestrian bridge next to that. So different options on the, on the facilities that we're, that we're looking at that kind of comprise the corridor. 
other elements that we're using, uh, trailheads for example, and we're going through now and trying to understand where a lot of those fit into the, into the master plan. Uh, but you know these these facilities would have public restrooms, pike, pike, parking for bike traffic as well as vehicular, and then uh, bike repair stations for anybody needing to do a little maintenance as they're out on the trail, uh, signage, wayfinding, uh, you know, drinking water, and all that stuff. So we're looking at the trailheads in their locations and spreading those out throughout the corridor appropriately. Also, as as we mentioned earlier, you know, being on the water just provides a, a, a whole different experience. We have the water there, right? We not only have these kind of bike and hiking, walking sort of uh, facilities, but we can also utilize canoe, kayak, um, and then those type of facilities as well. So we're looking at trail act, water trail access points and have programmed a few new ones into the, into the master plan as well. So a little bit about um, kind of the mapping and how we, we fit in to the, to the state and um, to the entire uh, Wabash corridor. So uh, this is DNR's 2018 kind of visionary trails map. Um, the 10 counties in blue, uh, Stan mentioned the Wynn County, so that's the, the 10 blue counties here. Um, so that's, that's the area that we're studying in detail. We're really looking at those five river counties. The other five counties, we're looking at putting amenity corridors, uh, resource amenity corridors, utilizing uh, various uh, streams and uh, transportation corridors throughout there to connect to those. Uh, the white line is the, is the spine. It is essentially the Wabash River uh, that runs through the, through the counties. Looking at some of the other visionary trails and how we feel like we create sort of this half wheel, this uh, loop system. So on the red is the um, Cardinal Greenway Great American Rail Trail. Uh, the, the light blue line going north south is the, the Monon Nickel Plate. Um, the orange is the Big Four Rail Trail coming out of Indianapolis, cutting through Boone County, Lebanon, up into Lafayette. And then the yellow, the lighter yellow, just, just south of that, is the B&O Trail uh, cutting out of Speedway and kind of over this way. And then obviously the, the black line, so the National Road Historic Trail. Um, the dashed black line is that connection we, you know, we hope to make at some point as well, kind of connecting down, down here. Yep. Uh, in the first iteration of the state's trail plan, we had pushed really hard to get uh, the Wabash River corridor all the way down here designated it as a visionary trail. You might remember that if you remember the plan. And it was put in the first plan as a state visionary potential state visionary trail. Uh, uh, during the process that they updated the plan and the second version of the plan is out now, they stopped it here. Um, they, they didn't feel there was any activity in this section down here. So, so as that round three of the uh, state plan is getting ready to start being done here in the next few years um, we want to be active as a group vermilion county fountain county and um Kip warren county and make sure that they understand there is a lot of activity for trails and greenways so we can get that corridor reestablished as a visionary corridor and so um, it's real important that we keep keep our thumbs to the wheel on this and, and stay involved so that when it comes time we get that corridor established because it is this this trail i think has 80 to 100 miles of 150 miles is done or under construction uh cardinal greenway american discovery trail that's done and open nickel plate Monon is done and open they have eight to ten miles in uh, clinton and boone counties is done and open and they just got some grants through the NLT uh, round two here to do some more work in here, and as did the B and O trail. So these these projects are coming, but the big gap is going to be our section here, and that's where we need to really fight and push and start getting our section prioritized within on the radar at the state level, so that we can start getting funding to address that that gap. Very good. So the blue counties on, on the previous map are kind of shown here in a little bit more detail, um, showing the, you know, the cities and towns on there, as well as those kind of connections that we, that we just mentioned uh, in a little bit more detail. So starting at the north, actually the, uh, the Panhandle pathway, we didn't mention that on the previous slide either. So that, 
you know, they, there's a key connection there that could uh, cut into connect to Logansport pretty soon, um, and that could go all the way 22 miles to the north and into Winnemac. Um, and then getting over to Peru, Peru kind of helps with that Great American Rail Trail, Nickel Plate Trail connection, um, and then we mentioned the Big Four, and you know, uh, going south through Fountain County, Vermilion Park down here. Um, we, we're also promoting this concept of trail towns, and we you feel we have about eight or so trail towns on the corridor. Um, you can see there on the left, and um, you know we we have broken the uh, our planning exercise into eight different locations as well, which helps to kind of formalize that around the around the trail towns. This is just an example of the level of detail that we're that we're looking at um, in, in most of the counties. I also want to make a, a point here too about um, how we're thinking about the trails and, and the routes and using both sides of the river. So this is this is just a good example. All the red here is existing, whether it's a solid red that's an actual trail, uh, dashed red is more of a signed bike route. And so our yellow here kind of brings in the um, our proposed route that we that we're thinking of, and uh, and you know that comes with a lot of different study behind it. Um, really thinking about all of the attractions we're trying to connect to, uh, thinking about you know just what's feasible, looking at right of ways. There's a lot of you know, history that we want to tell as well. So a lot of things that go into what we're looking at there. That's the primary route. The purple route here is the alternate route. So the primary is let's let's get that done first, and then the purple is hey, wouldn't it be nice if we also had this section open and this section, and you know it kind of starts to snowball. Um, but the point that is very important with with what we're looking at, and we feel it's pretty unique as a destination trail, is this this concept of looping. So you know there's several different bridges bridge crossings throughout the Wabash, throughout the five county area. So instead of being on a rail trail where you kind of go out and you come back, it's kind of a linear experience. This way you could park in one spot and you could do a five mile loop, you could do a 10 mile loop, you could do a 15 mile loop, you know, something like that. You start to see different things. You start to experience different areas of the corridor. And uh, we feel that's pretty unique to, to what we can offer here. And then the last item there is, is the light blue that just popped in in the upper right hand corner. And again, that's that amenity corridor we're looking at uh, to expand into various regions of the, of the 10 counties that we're looking at. And that's the Eel River in Cass County. The Panhandle Trail coming from Plaskai, like Randy mentioned, is another, another example for the resource amenity corridors. That's a 22 mile trail that doesn't connect anywhere. So we want to connect it down to the Wabash River Greenway at Grants Park in Cass County and then north up to Tippecanoe River State Park. And then another key aspect of that is connecting France Park to Logan's Fork because a lot of people camp, vacation. France Park's right there where the town of Kim is basically. Yes, yeah, and a rather significant park. We've not been there. There's uh, geological formations there. There's a quarry, that an incredibly deep lake. Uh, scuba divers like to go there because there's actually some kind of like caves underwater uh, and so that's a real popular park but also giving people the opportunity to ride bike into downtown Logansport is one of the things we're trying to accomplish and then the other point I, I think it's important to make on this slide is is we're doing this trail and we're going to communities and some of these communities have done some really really outstanding work Covington has the circle trail Delphi has their historic trails uh, and here in Logansport, we have the Little Turtle Waterway. And so we will be connecting to the good work that's already been done and doing some co-branding so that we can make certain somebody who's doing, you know, 50 miles on the Wabash River Greenway can find their way and stay on the trail. And when they come to the Little Turtle Waterway, we'll have one of our little signs there to just let them know you're still on the Wabash River Greenway. And here, it's called the Little Turtle Waterway. In Covington, it's called the Circle Trail. So we're looking at how we can co-brand the project uh, and and work with the good work that's already been done in communities up and down the Wabash River. And we're finding examples of those those same stories everywhere along along the river. That same sort of connection from Kenneth or France Park into Logansport. We're finding them in a lot of different areas. And 
hoping to hoping to be able to connect those areas through this process. So we have we're looking at 90 miles of the Wabash, um, uh, you know, river mile standpoint. On as you get into that looping system we were talking about, um, and looking at all the different routes and how that makes up the corridor, we have, that actually grows about 353 miles of uh, you know active transportation corridor and, and network. So about half of that is the rural sign route um, on, on county roads. About a third of it is a proposed site path, and then we also have trails and, and, the, and the sharrows that, that we talked about as well, and the existing trails. Signage, uh, we are developing a, a signage. We have a logo and a brand. Um, this is exactly what Ken was talking about here. Um, so there is that co-branding. There is great work that has been done throughout the corridor. We don't want to take away from that. We want to just have that kind of be a part of the system. So for example, Little Turtle Waterway image over there on the right, um, you know, a subordinate sort of uh, Wabash River Greenway logo being a part of that. Again, lets people know that they're, they're tying into a bigger system. We also are developing other, other signage aspects for all the different areas um, along the corridor, whether those be at, at trailheads or whether that be mile markers or directional signage, uh, kiosk, interpretive signage to help tell the, the history as well. So developing that comprehensive signage package and that brand that would be true throughout the, the five county area. 10 County actually. Pilot projects, uh, we, we looked at these as well as, as Stan mentioned earlier, can't build it all at once. So, you know, the idea is to get something implemented and we're trying to do that in all five counties um, currently. So we had a criteria list that we looked through, you know, what, um, what, what's shovel ready, what's popular, um, you know, is there funding that we can identify to pay for it, uh, you know, land being acquired, uh, something that could be acquired uh, easily. Um, there's not any large environmental concerns on this first round uh, for that property, for example. So we, we looked at, in the five county area, we looked at two to five sort of projects, just working with the steering committee and listening to uh, projects that, that have been talked about maybe for the last few years or, or something of that nature. Um, we, we listened, we looked at those, and then identified uh, one project per county. So in Carroll County, that connection that we talked about a minute ago from France Park, uh, actually to get from the, end of the southern end of the Panhandle pathway to France Park is that pilot project. So Next Level Trails, for example, uh, seems to be a good funding source for this project and uh, also have some, some private money that, that would help out with that as well. So that's, that's something we hope to get implemented here in the near future. Um, in Carroll County, the trailhead coming off of Carrollton Road, uh, we have a, a wonderful community-minded um, individual and family that would be willing to donate a piece of, of uh, their land on Carrollton Road to help create that trailhead and then pave that spur to the Delphi Trail system on the towpath. Um, so kind of pulling bicycles <coughs> off of the county road system and into their Delphi historic trail system. So that's, that's kind of part of that concept there in, in Carroll County. We would also improve some of the, the gravel trails that are along the towpath um, and, and pave those as well, bring in some of that signage we talked about too. In Tipkinu County, uh, North River Road Trailhead, so underneath the Sagamore Parkway 52 bridge on River Road on the West Lafayette side, having a trailhead there, adding canoe kayak access point um, which we think will be very popular with, with folks in the area. Um, and then up, up above uh, the state, and kind of going back to the INDOT conversation earlier too, you know, having that, they, they put in a pedestrian bicycle walkway over 52 Bridge a few years back, uh, but it's not connected on the end. So part of this project is to make sure we can get up there and, and connect that. And there's also another project going on with the city of West Lafayette that we're taking advantage of uh, in that as well. So a good sort of, it's kind of a trailhead, but it's also a nice connector project where it really hits on a lot of things. So we're pretty excited about that. In uh, Warren County at the Falls of Williamsport, so there's a couple different things going on here. Uh, there is a trail system from 
Williamsport or from the falls to their river road. And then we've master planned that for the future too to extend to the Wabash. Uh, but then there's also a lot of community buy-in and sentiment to improve the area around the falls to uh, really make that quite an attraction, or more of an attraction, right? It's already pretty amazing. So just uh, having that 90-foot waterfall, um, having, having, that, uh, having some of the amenities around that to help out. Well, what's a picture of on the uh, screen there? So that is the, the falls. Right. Yeah, Williams Park. The highest falls in Indiana. <clears throat> that's the falls of Williams Park? Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's not how I've never seen it like that before. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was a decent water flow that day. Yeah, it rained the night before. <laughs> but it is, not, it is actually nice. Is the trail still tough to get down to? It, we it's do have better. some accessibility issues, um, but then, yes, we're working on that and then extending that. They have a, a utility corridor that runs along the creek. Yeah, I've been there probably seven or eight times, and that be, I wouldn't recognize no. that. <laughs> okay. From my yeah. that, that's that's part of the project yeah. is to get it opened up and accessible. Okay, so is this a real photo? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's from last summer. Yeah, I, I agree with you, really. That's, that's why I asked. Uh, we'll come back more yeah. <laughs> after rain. Yeah, that's a picture taken last summer. Yep. Yeah. I was there last summer. Yeah. It's <laughs> I fell through the ice there once, too. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah, my fault. <laughs> yeah. Mine, too. You fell through the ice there? Oh, no. no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, and then in, uh, in Fountain County and Covington Circle Trail, so Dale, your project kind of extending that and creating the, the rest of the loop from, from 3rd Street um, along the riverfront section and then back to, to 2nd Street. So a nice connector project there with a couple of trailheads going underneath uh, the 136. And that is a real picture of Covington. <laughs> been there since 18, 1826. <laughs> so I think with that, I'll turn it over to Ken. Yeah, so this is our last slide. Uh, thank you for taking time to hear the story of this journey and uh, the work that we're doing up and down the Wabash River Corridor. And that photo is downtown Advent. <laughs> Last summer, right? See <laughs> <laughs> that, that photo there is the See the cabin cruisers coming up. <laughs> so, so no, there's been some talk today. Uh, Charlie brought up uh, about you know how do you how do you make these things happen? And what are some of the tools to make that happen? And these are some of the tools that states around the country have used to create destination recreation trails. Conservancy districts, uh, White River State Park is separate legislation on its own, mm -hmm. its own funding, right? Uh, you know, the Ohio River Greenway is also separate legislation. Uh, we have your commission here that was- Which is a separate agency. Right, and established by the state. Uh, you know, we would, we would like to see if we can't find, you know, uh, people in our legislature that might consider rethinking your funding and using your commission as a tool to make uh, this really happen. Uh, linear State Parks, we've discussed, <coughs> you know, the Wabash River starts in Ohio, so we could start at our eastern border of the state and have a linear state park that runs along the course of the Wabash River. Uh, and then the Iowa partnership model, and we have examples of that legislation, and that's more of a water trail project, but we have an example of that legislation. So just wanted to <clears throat> put out there that there are tools out there to actually make uh, these types of really significant projects happen and to bring the real resource that the Wabash River is to the state of Indiana and to the residents of our state. And with that, we'd like to open it up for questions. Yeah, Jim. 